Ooh, and welcome to Ninja Games. Well, lately I've been playing a lot of um, Kerbal Space Program, and I thought, why don't I do a video about the physics behind Kerbal Space Program, which is, of course, rocket science. Now, don't be put off. Rocket science isn't as hard as everyone says it is. If you know a little bit of al uh, algebra and a bit of calculus, don't be put off by calculus, it, it, you can do nearly everything to do with rocket science. So today I'm going to do an introduction to rocket science with me, Ginger Bill. And look at my amazing drawing of a rocket. Yeah, yeah, it's got flames and everything coming out the bottom. Yeah, that, 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 that's amazing, yeah. <laughs> let's just scroll down and let's start it. So the first thing about rocket science is you need to know the equations of motion. So these are your equations of motion. Now, in your equations of motion, these in have to incorporate these th three different elements, which are distance, velocity, and acceleration. In this, in these series of tutorials, I will be writing distance with the letter R, because in rocket science, most of the time when you're talking about distance, you're talking about distance the way from the center of a planet, which is your radius, which is R, of course, which is very useful. And um, units for R are usually meters or kilometers or feet or miles. Or, but as long as you're consistent with the units, I don't care what you use, just as long as you're consistent. So, for instance, you always use kilometers or you always use kilograms or tons or something. That's fine. The next one is velocity, which we denote with a letter V. Now, velocity is just how far you go in a certain time frame. So, for instance, miles per hour, or meters per second, or feet per second, or kilometers per hour. Because they are um, distance, so meters per time, which is seconds in this case, meters per second. So, from this, you can figure out that you can express velocity as a function of distance. So velocity is the rate of change of distance. Now this is a bit of calculus coming here, just a, just, just a tad, don't be put off again. All I've wrote here is dr by dt. Now dr means the, the change in distance and dt is the change in time. So this is the rate of change of distance. And if you're still a bit confused, I'll, I'll draw a little diagram. So I've got a, here's a graph, a nice little graph. Whoop, like so. And this is on the y-axis, is r, and this is the time. So I may have a, my this is my distance time graph. Yeah, this is just a little graph. And to find the velocity, we find the gradient. So let's say we want this point, find the gradient, this point here. So what we will do is to draw the gradient as a line. And to find the gradient, we find the change in the y-axis, so this is the distance r, in the ch and the change in the t-axis, which is this. So this is dr, this is dr, and that is dt. So you do dr over dt, and this gives us the function of distance, so velocity, which is very useful. And in some books you may see it written as r dot, which just is exactly the same, just the dot just means the rate of change of whatever's below. Now acceleration is is usually measured in meters per second per second, or meters per second squared, or feet per second per second, or feet per second per squared, whatever, whatever you want to say. And we usually denote it with the letter A. So, as you might be able to guess, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, which is dv by dt. Now, this is again, if the same with this graph, but instead of having r on the side, you'd have v for velocity. Now, sometimes it's very, very useful to express acceleration as a function of distance. So this just becomes, because that means 
if velocity is the rate of change of distance, that means acceleration must be the rate of change of rate of change of distance. Now that's a mouthful. Now, an easy way to write this would be to an easy way to write this is d squared r by dt squared. Now you may ask me, well, I've just wrote dr on its own here, so is dr just on its own, or you can write the d on its own? What the hell? Well, what I've wrote really, so if I just write another bracket over here, is I've wrote d by dt, which is just means rate of change. This does. I put it in brackets, squared it. So this means rate of change, rate of change. Mouthful again. Of the f distance. Yeah, get that now. And in some books, you may see acceleration written as I'm just writing it under a again, as v dot, which just means rate of rate of change of velocity, or r double dot. Yeah, so this means the rate of change, rate of change of distance. Yeah, oh, that's a mouthful. But they are your your three elements to your equations of motion. So stay tuned for the next video. Well, I'll show you and derive the four main equations of motion. And goodbye.